The US tourist visa process involves submitting documents, biometrics and a dreaded interview. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my experience and all the research that I did to get through this interview and get a 10 year US visa. So in this video, I'm going to be covering how you should present yourself in the interview, what are the things you should avoid saying and some special tips. So keep on watching. By now you would be familiar with the basic outline of the US visa process. Here is a quick summary. You need to book your appointment well in advance. It's a two-day process. There is biometric and document verification involved. But in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the last and the most crucial part of this entire process, which in fact, which is the interview. So let's jump right into it. So when you go for your interview, 99.99% of the time, this is the first question that you're going to be asked. Why do you want to visit the United States of America? And the way you answer this question pretty much sets the tone for the rest of the interview. Now keep in mind that these interviews are short. They are just three to five minutes. So you need to be very well prepared for this question. And also you need to make sure that you are clear and concise. So while preparing for this question, why do you want to visit the United States of America? The most important thing that you need to keep in mind is that you need to have a clear purpose of visit, which means that you need to have a clear agenda or a clear plan as to why you want to visit the United States of America. So the good answers to this question could be that you want to go to USA to visit your friend, you want to go to visit a relative, you want to go to attend an event or you want to go for a vacation. Whatever your answer is, make sure that you have done enough research and you have enough supporting material to support your answer. Now, let's take for an example that you want to go to the United States of America for a vacation. Now, the embassy officer is going to ask you where you're going, how many days you plan to go, where are you staying, what are the things that you intend to see, and so on. And you should be prepared to have answers to all of these questions. So this shows that you have a clear purpose and a clear plan of visiting the United States of America. Now, while applying for the visa, it is not necessary or not compulsory to have your tickets booked and your hotels booked, but it's a good idea to carry a travel itinerary or a travel plan with you, which basically shows that you have a clear agenda in mind. Let's take another example. Let's say that you are going to the United States of America to attend an event. Now, if you say that you want to attend a particular event, you will be expected to know all the details of that event. So you should be able to tell him or her uh, what the event is, what's the venue, what are the dates, what's the purpose, who's the sponsor, and so on and so forth. So at this point, let me also tell you what are the answers you need to avoid. So when you're asked, why do you want to visit the United States of America? Now the, the worst things that you can do is to be vague and to be lost. So saying things like, I haven't really thought about it, uh, I'm applying for visa for my future plans. I plan to travel, but I'm not really sure where I want to go. Now, these are the things which are not going to uh, lead you anywhere and will just get you in trouble. So avoid being vague, avoid being lost and be as clear and concise as you can. Now that we have covered why do you want to visit the United States of America. Let's now move to the second most important part of the interview process. And this is the question why would you come back to your country or what are your reasons to come back to India? And the way you answer this question will probably be the deciding factor between you getting this blue slip, which basically means that your visa is approved, or you getting a pink rejection slip. This question might be asked explicitly to you. The embassy officer might just directly ask you, what are your reasons to come back to India or how, how do I know for sure that you are going to come back to India? Or he might ask a bunch of questions around your work, around your life in India, around your family to decide whether you are somebody who is likely to come back or not. So whatever uh, be the case, here is how you need to prepare for this question. When you answer this question, it is very important to show that you have a set grounded life in India and you have enough reasons to come back to your own country. This could be your job, the company that you're working for. It could be parents or siblings who are dependent on you. It could be investments or funds that you have in India. It could be properties or other assets that you have purchased here. Another thing which can add to your credibility is your passport itself. So in the past, if you have traveled outside of India to Asia, Europe, or in fact, anywhere else, make sure that you highlight that. And this shows that you are a person who loves to travel, who in the past has gone outside the country and has come back. And this will add to your credibility. 
Now I want to clear something here. I feel like a lot of people who are freelancers or who have their own business feel like they're at a disadvantage here because they cannot really show a set job or you know a fixed income. But that's not really true. I'm a freelancer and when I went for an interview, I told them that I make YouTube videos and I make travel videos on YouTube and that I'm a freelancer. Now, because my story checked out, I had a YouTube channel, I had uploaded enough videos to prove that I was in fact doing, taking it seriously. And uh, I, my passport had uh, stamps from other countries. I had traveled enough in the past. All this contributed to the fact that my story was valid. It checked out. I indeed wanted to go to USA as a tourist and hence I got my visa. And this of course combined with the fact that my entire family was in India, my base was in India and I had investments here in India. So if you're a freelancer or a business person, uh, do not feel intimidated by the fact that you cannot show a fixed income or you know a fixed job. Make sure that whatever story you're telling checks out and that you have enough proof to show that you have a base in India. Now the third thing that I want to cover in this video is the documents that you need to carry with you for the interview process. Now, if you uh, read about the US interview process or the US visa process, it does not explicitly mention any documents that you need to carry with you for the interview. I sp but I spent days preparing for documents that I would probably need. And in fact, during the interview, I was not asked to show even one single document. But nonetheless, you need to be prepared. And next, we are going to discuss what are the documents that you need to carry with you. So what are these documents? Now, these documents are everything that will support the two things that we discussed in this video. What is your purpose of visiting the United States of America and what are your reasons for coming back to your country? Now the reason you need to have these documents is when you are giving these answers, if you are asked proof for anything that you are saying, you should be able to show it to them then and there. For example, if you say that your reason that you need to come back to India is because you have properties invested here, then you need to be able to show proof for that. It could be property tax, it could be ownership papers or anything else. Similarly, if you say that you have enough funds invested in India and therefore you will come back, then you need to show proof of that. It could be an FD statement, mutual fund statement and so on. Documents that you need to carry with you into three different categories and now let's quickly go over them. The first category are the financial documents. Now in the financial documents, you most definitely should carry your salary slip, your income tax returns, your bank statement, your proof of funds and additional things like mutual fund statement, property tax statement or anything else which adds to your financial credibility. Now one thing that you need to keep in mind here is that if you are an individual who is planning to visit the USA and if you are saying that somebody else is going to fund your travel, then you need to carry with you all the financial documents of that other person who is funding your travel as well. So this would include their bank statement, their salary slip, their investments, etc. Second category is the travel documents. Now, when you apply for a US visa, you don't need to have booked flight tickets or booked hotel accommodation, but you do need to carry some travel documents with you. And what are they? The first thing that you need to have is a travel itinerary. So you need to have a definite day-by-day -day itinerary of what you plan to do during your visit. You need to have address of your friends or relatives with whom you plan to stay, or a list of two to three hotels that you are uh, most probably going to book when you visit. You also need to carry with you details of all the events, venue, uh, sightseeing locations that you are going to cover during your visit to the United States. And the third and the final category of documents that you need to prepare and carry with you for the interview process is you. Now, this might sound a little confusing, but what I mean by this is that this is basically all the documents that checks out your story. For example, if you are married and you're saying that you are going to travel with your husband, then you need to have a marriage certificate. If you're saying that your husband is going to fund your travel, then his, uh, you know, travel, uh, then his financial documents, his proof of funds are required. If you're a freelancer, then you would need to show some proof of your work. So probably, you know, carry some work with you or if your work is online, then probably, you know, carry a list of links that you can show to them. So basically this list is endless and the best way that you can prepare for this set of documents is by practicing what exactly you're going to say, what exactly is your purpose of visit, what exactly are your reasons for coming back and then double checking your story and seeing what all are the proofs that you can add to support your story. So guys, this is how you can prepare for a US visa interview. 
clear it and get this pink uh, sorry get this blue slip which basically means that your visa is approved i hope this video has helped you out now if you want to uh, know more details about the interview process and in fact if you would like a personalized one to one coaching on how to clear this interview then do get in touch with me via instagram you can send me a dm on instagram my instagram bio is right here and it is also mentioned in the description box now if you want to see a detailed video on the entire us visa process it's a two day process so if you want to know what exactly happens what are the steps that you need to go through in those two days then do comment below and let me know i will make a separate video for that thank you so much for watching if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and please share it with your friends and family Signing off for now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.